Whether it's sports betting, a trip to the casino with your friends, or opening CSGO cases, it's sometimes very difficult to stop gambling. We've all been there, some more than others. But why? What makes gambling so addictive? Well, when you boil it down, it comes down to the chemical in your brain called dopamine. Dopamine is the neurochemical transmitter that's responsible for pleasure, and it's part of your body's reward system. When you do something that releases dopamine, it tells your brain that what you just did was a good thing, and you should seek to do it again. Things like going on a walk with a friend, hugging a loved one, or even getting a good grade in school release dopamine in your brain, and they make you feel good. The only problem is other things that aren't actually good for you release dopamine as well, and they release them more potently. One prime example of this is gambling. When you go and place a bet, your brain releases that feel-good chemical, and essentially, you feel as if you want to do it again. You got a thrill, some excitement. You were involved in the action, and that's the rush that people describe when they gamble. It's the entire reason that people gamble, but some view it as entertainment, Others develop what's called tolerance towards the amounts that they were gambling. Tolerance is basically the idea that as you keep gambling, you have to bet more or at least more frequently to get that same excitement that you got previously from a smaller bet or a reduced number of bets. So essentially, when you develop a gambling problem, you become tolerant towards the amounts that you were gambling before. And you start to increase the frequency, increase the amount you're gambling until it can get to an unhealthy level. And you're doing this not thinking logically, but because your brain thinks this feels good. I should do it again. Things like drinking alcohol or using drugs also release dopamine in the brain. And that's why addictions develop because your brain becomes adapted to only want to get its feel good chemicals from these intense surges. And why wouldn't it? If it's so used to getting this big hit, a hit from going on a walk with a friend, the small hit of dopamine that you'll get it won't be enough to feel satisfied once you're used to those higher amounts. So this tolerance can really screw up your brain and it can make you neglect everything else in your life except for gambling, if that's what you've developed an addiction towards. That's why someone with a gambling addiction doesn't feel like they can stop and they do ridiculous things, looking as an outsider, to keep gambling, like selling possessions, borrowing money to gamble, lying to get money to gamble. These are things that I personally did as well because it's not logical. You're not thinking about, is this a good financial decision? You're just trying to get that next hit of intense pleasure. And the scary thing about this is that anyone can develop a gambling addiction. There's certain genes that make you more likely to be sensitive to the amounts of dopamine that get triggered from something like gambling. But in general, anyone can develop the problem with prolonged use, which is why you need to be conscious of whether or not your gambling is going beyond entertainment. If gambling is a problem for you or someone that you know, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any info about how to live a happier and healthier life. Because at the end of the day, it's up to the problem gambler to seek help and live a better life. But the casino industry sure doesn't make that easy. In fact, they go out of their way to make games more addictive and manipulate the people who have a gambling addiction. Here's a few examples of that. Casinos actually use uglier floors so that you'll look up at the tables because you don't want to look at this ugly floor. You want to see what else is around and everything you look at is a place where you can wager money. They want your eyes fixated on the things that you can gamble on because that will tempt you given enough time. Additionally, there's no windows and there's no clocks in a casino because they don't want you to remember that you need to leave at a certain point. Someone might go in with the intention of staying for an hour but end up staying for three because they're not keeping track of time and the games are exciting, they're stimulating, and by the time they realize what's actually going on, hours could have passed that they didn't previously plan for. And because the casino games all contain a house edge, meaning that the house has the statistical advantage to win the game, if you keep gambling, you will eventually lose. That's why it's in the casino's best interest to keep you in there as long as possible. So they don't want to give you any reason to leave. Additionally, when someone wins in a casino, there is a big celebration. All the bells and whistles are going off. Everyone's rushing to see how much did this person win. And that's intentional. The casino has specifically made these wins as loud and gaudy as possible because they don't want you to be paying attention to the row of people who are pressing that button and frowning and not enjoying themselves. They want you to see that one person who's hit that jackpot because that could be you, even though statistically it's not supposed to be. They want you to keep believing 
in that next big win because you're not supposed to get it, but it'll keep you playing for longer. It's a time game. The casino wants you to stay as long as possible. That's why they offer you free drinks. Alcohol makes you forget how much time is going by. It warps all of your senses and it lowers your inhibitions so that you'll actually be more willing to part with your money. Someone who's drinking might be betting higher amounts. And even if you're not a problem gambler, it can really mess up your senses and you can go well beyond what you had planned to gamble, which can eventually become a gambling problem. It's the same reason that they offer credit lines and casino chips instead of cash. They want to decouple you from not only the time, but the value of your money. When you go into a casino and you trade your dollar bill for a casino chip, you are now gambling with a piece of plastic. That piece of plastic doesn't feel real if you really boil it down, right? When you're wagering, say, a $25 chip, that looks and feels much different than wagering $20 bill and a $5 bill. It's almost like, and this is kind of embarrassing to even say out loud, when I go out and I spend money on the card, it doesn't feel real until I look at the credit statement. It feels as if I'm just in Candyland or making make-believe money. It just feels different when you're not seeing that exchange, that physical exchange right in front of you. And the most dangerous thing that the casino's offering up are credit lines or credit extensions. In a physical casino, that could be a cash advance window or an ATM, whereas on the online casino, they may very well just accept a credit card. And if not, then they sell gift cards that you can use your credit card to buy the gift card. So there's always a workaround for you to gamble on borrowed money. It's this idea of not quite feeling the loss when it happens. Instead, it's like when you're trading in the stock market and you see unrealized loss versus unrealized gain. It doesn't feel real until you realize it. In the stock market that's selling it, in the casino, it would be leaving and counting what you have left. The casino decouples you from all of your senses and takes you for everything that you're worth. And again, not to say that someone with a gambling addiction can just blame the casino for everything because you can't. I know I'm a recovering gambling addict myself. I've been clean for over a year and a half, but I think back to the decisions I was making and I was the one making those decisions. It was just always so easy to make them. So I would love to see a day where the industry helps people with a gambling problem. But the sad reality is that the casino industry makes the majority of their profits off of people with gambling addictions. Upwards of 86% of casino profits came from 5% of players online. That's the 5% that are addicted to gambling. It's very sad to think about, but the casino's best interest does not align with the best interest of the gambling addict ever. In fact, you're set up in an adversarial situation. The casino wants you to lose, and you want the casino to lose just as much. But you're playing games where the latter is just not supposed to happen. The house always wins. It should be noted as well that while the casinos continue to bloat in size every single year and set records for their revenues every single year in the United States and worldwide, that we're not seeing the same boom in problem gambling help or resources. In fact, the funding disparity is insane. In the United States, you're seven times more likely to have a substance use disorder than a problem gambling disorder. But funding for substance use is 338 times greater than funding for problem gambling. That's not to say we need to lower the amount of funding that substance use disorders are receiving, because some would argue that they're still underfunded, but it's just showing you how small the problem gambling recovery industry actually is. And when millions of people out there, five million estimated Americans, need help, need resources, we need to have some kind of program in place to help them. Telling people to call a number and then go to a meeting every week isn't enough. Though those meetings are a vital part of the recovery process, if we're not putting any public funding into problem gambling recovery, we're not going to see more problem gamblers getting the help that they need. In fact, only 8% of problem gamblers ever seek help for their addiction. That means 92% of people with a gambling addiction either don't recognize it or refuse to seek help for what actually could be a life-threatening problem. It is a very, very scary time. And I hope that if you're watching this video right now and you or someone you love is struggling with a gambling problem, that you'll be a part of that 8% because it truly does get better when we start to work on ourselves and we start to live a happier and healthier life. If you're looking for some steps on how to get clean from a gambling problem or to send to someone that you love, then check out this video that I made. It's a complete guide to quit gambling 
and it's the four steps that I've used to stay clean for over the last 500 days. Thank you so much, and let's keep getting better together one day at a time.